One of the most tragic stories of the Tudor period was the fate of Catherine Howard. Catherine was Henry VIII's fifth wife, and was between the age of 16 and 21 when she was executed inside the Tower of London. Catherine had been accused of the shameful crime of adultery, and sleeping behind the grotesque Tudor king's back with one of his closest friends and courtiers. It was Archbishop Thomas Cranmer who was alerted to her indiscretions, and there were two key parts to the Queen's crimes. Catherine Howard, as mentioned, had been allegedly meeting up with Thomas Culpepper, and been having adulterous liaisons with him, which were manufactured and set up by Jane Boleyn. But also there was a huge amount of doubt cast on her relationship with another man, Francis Derham, who it was believed she had previously had relations with before marrying the king, but also that she was betrothed to him. With this, it would have invalidated the king's marriage and made the king and Catherine's binding marriage a sham and nothing which stood in the eyes of the law. But Catherine would lose her head in the Tower of London, but there was one of her servants and close ladies who actually was part of her downfall, and was one of the people who can be mostly blamed for her horrific downfall. But what is the story of Alice Wilkes, the woman who condemned Henry VIII's wife to execution? Very little is known about Alice Wilkes, and there are no known portraits of her. She was mentioned as a woman who served inside the Dowager Duchess of Norfolk's household in Sussex, and then at Lambeth. And it was inside this household where Catherine Howard was raised, and it was here where she was a young girl who was groomed by her music teacher Henry Mannix, and also began a relationship with Francis Derham. Now Derham worked as a secretary for the Dowager Duchess, who was entrusted with Catherine's care and education, and it was mentioned that Malin Tilney, Dorothy Baskerville, Margaret Tennant and Alice Wilkes were there, and it's believed that Alice was a servant inside of Agnes Tilney's household, whilst Catherine Howard was there. With this, it's believed that Alice was aware of Catherine Howard's behaviour and sexual antics as a young woman. What Catherine got up to after the lights went out was probably spoken about with the other girls in the care of Agnes Tilney, and also amongst the servants, who gossiped in the halls of the houses where they lived. But when Agnes would find out, she would be furious. She found out that Francis Derham had struck up a relationship with Catherine, and that the pair would walk arm in arm together in the halls, and refer to each other as husband and wife. But Alice Wilkes, the servant, would then marry Anthony Restwold, who was also part of the household, but it's not known for certain when they married. He would later become an MP for New Woodstock during the reign of Mary I, but he would also have known about Catherine's behaviour. It was clear that the future Queen was being influenced by some of the older girls who allowed men into their sleeping quarters at night, and on some occasions the girls stole food and wine, and they hosted parties in these rooms after dark. Catherine was never cut out for being a queen, and she was too immature and not cut from that regal cloth. Her relationship with Henry VIII was built up upon the skills that Catherine possessed in the bedroom, as it was said she cured the king's impotency, and Henry VIII claimed he'd never known the like to any woman, and he shrouded her in gifts as he sought to entice her. Catherine would later marry the king on the 28th of July 1540, and she was just a teenager, and Henry VIII was 49. The marriage was made public a week or so later, but she was too young, naive, and carefree. She did not involve herself in matters of state, and as mentioned, began to become involved with Thomas Culpepper, the king's favourite male courtier. It was uncovered later that Catherine may have considered marrying Culpepper, as she served as a lady-in-waiting to Anne of Cleves, and the pair met in secret and slept together whilst she was married to the king. But after rumours of this dominated court, Archbishop Thomas Cranmer investigated this, and people who claimed to have witnessed her earlier sexual behaviour while she lived with Agnes Howard were contacted. Many tried to blackmail the young queen in return for their silence, and some of the blackmailers were even appointed to her royal household. John Lassells approached Cranmer and told him that his sister refused to become part of Catherine Howard's royal household, 
as she had witnessed the light ways of Queen Catherine whilst they were living together at Lambeth. With this, Cramner interrogated Mary, and she claimed that Catherine had sexual relations whilst under the care of the Duchess before her relationship with the King, but another woman who was summoned as a significant witness in evidence against Catherine Howard for adultery and treason was Alice Wilkes. She would later testify that Catherine was a married woman and with what matrimony meant and what belonged to that puffing and blowing. And she also claimed that she heard from behind the bed curtains the antics of Catherine Howard and Francis Deerham. Alice herself had some time at court during Catherine's time as queen, so Catherine must have respected her and enjoyed her company, and some accounts claim that Alice Wilkes was a chamberer, but also as a gentlewoman showing she was well respected and thought of inside of the royal household. But Catherine Howard would ultimately play the, the bloody price for her actions. By this point, when the king was informed about his wife's indiscretions, he was happy just to have her killed and almost erased from history. Culpepper and Deerham, the men she slept with, were executed for high treason, with Culpepper being beheaded by axe and Deerham being hanged, drawn and quartered. Both of their heads were placed on Tower Bridge, with Catherine passing under them on her way to the Tower of London, following an act of Attendale which was passed against her. She was punishable by death for the fact she had failed to disclose her past sexual history to the King within 20 days of their marriage, and that she had incited someone to commit adultery with her. Also, the matter of Catherine being pre-contracted to marry Deerham led to her being condemned to death, despite no trial happening. But it was the words and accounts and testimonies of women such as Alice Wilkes, who had a key role in condemning Catherine Howard to death, and to sending her to the executioner's scaffold. On the scaffold in the Tower of London, she kneeled on the hay and would have her head taken cleanly off by the executioner in one swift blow from the axe. She was spared no airs and graces, and was then thrown into a pit inside the chapel of St Peter Advincula at the Tower, and her remains were covered in quicklime to erase her from history. But the words of Alice Wilkes, who had seen her behaviour and her relationships with Deerham, play out inside of Agnes Howard's household, were damning in themselves. She knew what Catherine had been up to previously, and along with other witnesses, she helped to reinforce the need to execute the Queen, in the eyes of Cramner and Henry VIII. The story of Catherine Howard is a tragic one, but Alice Wilkes is the forgotten woman who helped to sentence a queen to death. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.